Our scripture reading for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 3 through 7. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave his ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts his on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scripture. Today's song finds itself just beyond halfway through the musical Dear Evan Hansen. For those of you that don't know, Dear Evan Hansen is a musical about a kid named, well, Evan Hansen, who spends a large part of his life feeling invisible. His school is shaken up following the suicide of a student named Connor. Evan is then given the opportunity to create a life that he never lived. And through this, he got enveloped deeper and deeper into a lie. This song is a speech that he gave at an assembly at his school about making sure everyone knows that they are not alone. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten? the middle of nowhere have you ever felt like you could disappear like you could fall and no one would hear well let that lonely feeling wash away maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And don't, someone will come running And I know, they'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through when you need a friend to carry you and when you're broken on the ground you will be found so let the sun come streaming in cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again lift your head and look around you will be found Come on. 
comes crashing through when you need someone to carry you. When you're broken on the ground. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need someone to carry you. found. So I showed that to my wife last night and uh, she said it's very obvious that you typically have a guitar in your hand because you're standing there and you're like not knowing what to do with your hands. And I feel like I preach the same way. So I don't know if I need to start doing some Dimitri Martin playing guitar while I tell my jokes that aren't really that funny. But we'll see. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always faithful in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. I remember when I was a kid, I would get asked, if you had a superpower, what would it be? I feel like if my memory is serving me correctly, that my answer was almost always to be invisible and to be able to fly. For obvious reasons, I wanted to turn invisible because I wanted to walk through walls, scare people, and win every single game of hide-and-seek you could literally play ever. I wanted to fly because all of the cool superheroes were able to fly, so that is just a no-brainer. As I grew older and my sense of wonder and amazement started to fade, my dreams of having superpowers slowly began to fade as well. It was no longer cool to want to be a superhero, so I played sports. And when that didn't work out, I joined band. And that was always super fun, and my passion for music drove me to join a metal band as a vocalist where some of my fondest memories happened. Despite how great these memories were, I lost touch with my faith. Maybe it had something to do with my fading sense of wonder, as it is that exact sense of wonder that keeps one's faith alive. Despite how happy I seemed, there was one superpower that I still wanted to have. I wanted to be invisible. The idea of being able to hide from the pressures of being a teenager who is between making a decision to go to college and pursue music as a career sounded great. The ability to hide from the people that bully you sounded phenomenal. The ability to hide from the mistakes I had made sounded perfect. Then there were times where I really did feel invisible. My dream had come true, but it wasn't what I had hoped for. I got what I was looking for, and it left me feeling more empty than I did before. I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but it's kind of like meeting your heroes and them turning out to be crummy people. I feel like the opening questions of our song from Dear Evan Hansen really captures how it feels to be invisible. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear, like you could fall, and no one would hear? I don't know if any of you could answer yes to these questions, but I know I could. I went through a time in my life where I could check every single one of those boxes. And that is a dangerous place for your mind to be in. Yet it is a place that so many find themselves in daily you see, there are people of all ages that wake up every day and say something like, today could be the day. Things like, if I were to disappear, would anyone notice? Would anyone even care? So often we are able to convince ourselves that the answer to those questions is no. Let me tell you something. Those voices are wrong. Those voices are evil. Those voices are valid in your experience. 
But I beg you, don't listen to them. Seek out a louder voice that will tell you otherwise. If you have never felt feelings like that, or even if you have, but you don't any longer, or maybe you still feel those feelings, but you now have a support system in place that to keep those voices at bay, be the louder voice for someone else. Seek them out. Bring them hope. This reminds me of the passage that was read today. Let's read it again. It's from Luke chapter 15, verses 3 through 6. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. At first read, this looks like very irresponsible shepherding practices. You have 99 perfectly good sheep still, so what is one lost to the wilderness? After all, if you chose to, they, it chose to wander off, it chose to stray, it decided it didn't need me, the shepherd, anymore, it decided it would be better by itself. Why risk leaving the rest of my sheep unattended and open to the wolves to go look for the one that the wolves had likely already gotten to? How often do we as Christians think things like that? How often, even jokingly, do we say someone is too far gone? How do we even establish that kind of a threshold? What is too far gone? Who are we to even establish that threshold? Yet here we are, calling people lost causes leaving them to the wolves because they decided to stray. That's on them, right? Let me argue. Why did you let them go astray? What did you do that pushed them away? Why did you let one of your own get left behind? What circumstances were you complacent in that led them to feel invisible to the point of wanting to wander away thinking no one would notice. Well, God noticed. And guess what? God left all of us behind to seek out that one. When God was able to locate them, God picked them up and lifted them onto God's shoulders and carried them back to be with the rest of the flock. God saw them as worthy enough to not even have to walk themselves back. Not only that, but when the shepherd returns with the lost sheep, what does he do? He calls his friends and family and throws this huge party. This is a theme that we see in every story about someone who has been lost and returns by either themselves, as in the case of the prodigal son, or with help, as in the case of the parable today. Both are worth celebrating. And I think that is an important note to take. Just because they didn't come back by themselves doesn't mean their return is any less celebratory. The love of God is not some bootstrap to pull up. The love of God is freely given to all of God's creation. Some are able to recognize it themselves. Some need a little help. The love of God is something that you can find if you want to, but it is also something that will go out and find you. Let me talk to someone who may need to hear this today. You are never beyond the love of God. Nothing you can do can put you too far from God. God will travel to the ends of the earth to find you, no matter how hard you make it. God wants you as you are. And God wants to call you blessed and holy. 
God wants to know, God wants you to know that God sent God's own Son down to bring all to Him and make every single person on this earth a beloved child of God. There is nothing you can do that will have this gift taken from you. As the song today says, you will be found. But not just that. You have already been found. You have already been lifted onto God's shoulders, and you are already being carried back. You are already loved to a deeper level than you could ever imagine. I'm sorry that you have been made to feel invisible. I'm sorry if our actions helped you convince yourself no one would notice. Church, today I want you to promise with me that we will never let a single brother and sister that is entrusted into our care fall through the cracks. We are a team, and a life of following Christ is a team sport. If one of us goes down, we all better link arms and pull them back up. We need to continuously find a way to be a source of hope in our world. We need to continually be sharing the love of God through our thoughts, words, and deeds. Something that I feel like we tend to forget is that people's lives are on the line here. I, I think y'all might have missed that. Something that we tend to forget is that people's literal life is on the line here. Be a source of hope, and if it is beyond your skill set, help them find someone who can help them. Encourage them to talk to someone, to find the help that they need, the help that they deserve, the help that God would have them get in order that one day, one beautiful day, maybe God won't have to leave all of us behind to find someone who had drifted away. We need to keep our eyes open and keep our hearts ready to not let anyone drift away. Because I'll say it again, we let someone in our midst drift from the flock. We are the hands and feet of Christ in our world. If someone doesn't think they have experienced the love of God, that's on us. We are the ones that have the ability to make sure no one is left behind. We are the ones who are given the task to ensure that no one is left behind, and we fail that task daily. There is this band that I listen to called The Color Morale, and they have this little statement that is the theme of all of their music. No hope. K N. O W, hope. Not just have it as in to hold it in your hand, but to truly know hope, to be fully understanding of what it means to be filled with hope, to have it become a part of you, not this external thing that we blindly reference when we don't know what to say to someone who is hurting. We, church, all of us, we have this hope at our fingertips. The hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The hope that is found in the death and resurrection of Christ. How is there hope in that? Because in that moment, in that morning so long ago where the tomb was empty, that we celebrate still to this day sin and death lost. Victory was proclaimed, and the spoils are eternal life given to every single one of us. The hope is that even though we all sin, even though we all mess up, even though we all become the sheep that wanders astray, God has searched us out. Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe, just maybe, the gatekeeping that we as Christians tend to so often 
do has led us astray. Maybe the ones that remained with the shepherd are the ones who knew they needed him the most, and despite what the voices in their heads say, they continue to follow. Despite their screams and cries, they continue to pray. And maybe the one who strayed was us. The ones who thought that they were too far gone and not worth saving. This message is for all of us. We all find ourselves wandering from the fold of God, and sometimes we find ourselves hiding more and more because we have sunk ourselves into a deeper and deeper hole. But don't worry. God will always find you. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, when you are broken on the ground, you will be found. Don't forget, the call to follow Christ is a team sport. When one of us falls, we will all link arms and pick them back up. In the words of the great documentary, Lilo and Stitch, Ohana means family. And family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. We are all a family. If you ever feel like you are in a place where you think no one would notice, know that God will leave everyone else behind to come and find you. Know that you returning to the comfort of God's love is more important to God than ensuring the safety of the rest of us. Know that you are loved and beloved by God. Know hope. Amen.